All right. We're back at the scene. Back at it. It's Mikey Pipes at DCHVAC. Make sure you smash his subscribe button on his YouTube channel. Smash it. Tell him. Smash it. <laughs> All right. We're back at the shorted to ground. Sorry. Shorted to co ground compressor, which is inside this three ton Luxair system. And we're putting in this. This Fujitsu by Ream, three ton, 410A. 13 seer system it's friday morning you're gonna get it done peter's right behind you i made the customer aware of two things compressors fail for a reason and the second once we replace the compressor in this case the entire condensing unit we'll be able to see if there's a the reason for the compressor failure txv restrictions something like that right okay you look nervous you're good Oh, uh, you know what, it, it, if you want, you could do this. Take a couple vacuum uh, pumps and a couple recovery tanks and let them run over the weekend. You could do that if you wanted to. Yeah, we have a real, real deep vacuum. So, oh, we got everything ready. Look at this, see? See, ladies and gentlemen, where's the filter dryer? It's in the unit. Is it really? Yeah. Does this one come with one? Yes. Very nice. Very, very nice. Cool. Okay. Good morning. It is Friday, uh, 8 49 a.m. I just finished my first call. A leaking ductless unit that he just wanted to have charged with 410. And. Now I am on my way to replace a condenser. Mike was there yesterday and the compressor was shorted to ground. The customer doesn't want to replace just the compressor, they want to replace the log or unit, so that's what I'm doing. Um, and hopefully I can get good footage for it. Okay, so I'm at the unit right now. It's a Luxair, which is just made by York. Uh, four ton. I'm vacuuming down my recovery tank. It's a new recovery tank before I recover this refrigerant since I can't pump it into the machine with a dead compressor. Uh, using the True Blue hose with the True Blue Micron gauge and just getting everything set up here. I purged a little bit of nitrogen through the tank just to make sure it's clean and I'll start disconnecting the wiring. Got my thermostat wire disconnected. And I put Wagos on it so we don't short out. And uh, disconnect is disconnected. The whip. Got my gauges hooked up and purged the air out. Just still waiting for this to vacuum down. I'm gonna open up the new condenser and try to get as much ready as possible. And here we have the new condenser. It's a Fujitsu. Uh, from my understanding, it's just a ream with a different name on it. I've got our instructions, our filter dryer. 7 eighths and 3 eighths, 410, uh, 4 ton, so should go right into place, uh, cut the line set right about here and I'll straighten it out, straightening it out will get me in further and uh, I'll stay right the connections, so I'll clean these off now while I'm waiting for the recovery tank to vacuum down still. Okay, so I got my Trade Fox uh, umbrella set up by Subco. Give me shade in this area so the sun's not beating down on me, giving me sunburn. Getting pretty close with the micron gauge, a little bit longer, and then I could start recovering. Uh, yeah, it stinks that it's taking so long to vacuum down, but it is what it is. The filter dryer on this unit is built into it. If you take a look in there, if I could get the camera to focus, right down there. And you can see our compressor with our plug fold off. This mic was testing it and it was shorted to ground. So, it's a little bit longer and I could start the recovery process. Recovering now, it pulled a lot of it in while it was under a vacuum. See our pressures. 
probably take definitely take a few minutes. Once that's done, we'll cut it out, get it out of here, and put the new one in place. Just had Peter grab me a five-gallon bucket and I filled it up with water. The recovery tank's getting super hot because it's so hot outside. You can see it's at almost 530 psi. How much this pulls it down? Oh yeah, we're already dropping. So with a lower pressure, I think it should also fill the tank faster. We're down by 50 psi already, and it's still dropping. probably going to do this. I mean, this is almost 100 PSI now difference. It's been maybe about a minute and it's already down like 200 PSI, so that's a lot. And then we'll see how full the tank is. We'll weigh it, see how much the pressure we pulled out. To get an idea of how much we'll need for the run, based on what this is factory charged with. I got my stay bright connections made. There, there, there. And I just pressurized with nitrogen. And I'm gonna hit enter to do the test. And it reads the temperature as well. So it calculates the loss uh, or gain with the temperature going up or down. And we'll let that sit for a few minutes and make sure we have no leaks. It's been two minutes, and so far we have a positive pressure difference. So, let it sit for a little longer, but I don't think we're gonna have any leaks. And now I'm gonna purge some nitrogen through to make sure to get any oil and moisture out. See, we're at, we are getting some oil from the refrigerant. And that's just gonna make it harder to pull a vacuum. We'll let this go until it runs clear. The oil has actually got a brown color to it. Yeah, and it stinks. So I think that means that I can't use the recovered refrigerant. Good. I just got the vacuum pump hooked up, true blue gauge, the true blue hoses, or one hose because I only have the one port on the vacuum, but I have my gauge at the farthest point away from the vacuum, so it'll give us an accurate measurement on our micron readings. So here's what we read at the vacuum, uh, about 9,000. And we're only just starting to get out of high pressure on the Bluevac Plus Pro Micron Gauge. So it's pulling from here all the way from the evaporator coil. And our reading is at the very end of it since these are both closed. And it's definitely going to take a while. And I'll probably break the vacuum with nitrogen a few times to make sure to get any contaminants and moisture and oil out. Uh, a triple evacuation, I'll try to record doing that. So we have 1300 microns right now. I just connected my nitrogen and I'm going to purge with nitrogen or break the vacuum with nitrogen and then I'll disconnect the uh, micron gauge and I'll purge it a little bit and I'll make sure to close the vacuum port off while I do that. So right now I'm just breaking that vacuum. Pretty close to empty. 
that it's slowly going to break because uh, it's going to the TXV. And once this reads high pressure, I'll remove it and let the, refrigerant, the nitrogen flow through it. pressure drop off and I'll put the I'll tighten this back up and put the vacuum gauge back on and go again and while this continues to vacuum I hooked up my low voltage wiring and my line voltage wiring and I'm going to turn the thermostat on and make sure the contactor pulls in power is off so the unit won't come and off. our contactor is now pulled in so we know that's working and now we just wait for it to vacuum down to below 500 microns I've been hearing this unit vibrate like crazy, and I put my hand over it right here, and it stopped, and I realized the screw was missing, so. I don't have a black one, but I'll put, oh, that one didn't catch. I'll put one in to stop that from making so much noise, and vibrating so much. long one. It might be the same threading, but we'll see if it works. No. Let's see if I can figure out. Try this, putting a zip tie in and we'll have the zip tie short. That's nice and tight. There we go. And I'll cut this just to get it to stop vibrating so much. I don't know what's going on with my camera, but I finished vacuuming and dumped the charge and I flipped the circuit breaker back on inside and the video keeps freezing, so I didn't get any of it. But I got my hoses hooked up and purged, uh, refrigerant hooked up, and we're gonna see how much we need to add. charging chart we're at about 95 degrees so for the 48 it's asking for roughly 386 on the high side and 137 on the low side so we're at three pounds now and we're starting to approach that so we'll let it balance out like this and see how good we get on our sub cooling we're at 10.6 on our sub cooling Super heat is at 19. Let's see, we're condensing nicely. The suction line's nice and hot. And now we'll take some temperature readings inside to make sure it's cooling properly. Exactly, almost exactly 10 degrees on our sub cooling. And you can see here, our 95, we want 10 degrees. So if we read the air, in the room currently, we're at about 72 degrees. And if we go to our supply, 47, 45, 
46. So we're blowing nice and cold. And we know it's cooling properly, the charge is right. While we, while Peter puts everything away, I'm going to test our incoming voltage uh, to make sure that that's good and that that's not why the other compressor burnt out. So I got my leads on. And we're reading 241 from one leg to ground, we're getting 120. The other leg to ground, 120. And I'm gonna take an amp. I'm gonna take an amp draw as well. Onto AC volts and go between this leg and 16 amps. Everything together is running lower than that, and we are good. Got the rest of that suction line insulated, and put a pipe doctor sticker on it, and we're good to go. So we finished up with that. Everything's working perfectly. Uh, customer is very happy. It's blowing nice and cold, uh, and that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed At the, the next video. Slide, turn you right. Like it. Uh, comment any advice or criticism or feedback and subscribe. Thanks for